no rust allowed. You heard me, there's absolutely no rust allowed in HMB. Well, it says so right here in the rule book. And stay tuned for this cool little experiment that I did. If you're wearing plate in any of these sports, whether it's Boohert, SCA, even HEMA, if you have steel plate and you're continually polishing it up, you might be taking a little bit more uh, steel off your plate than you realize. So we'll check that out here in a minute. But I'm gonna tell you what, um, I used to get made fun of for things like, uh, in a good way, I get made fun of for after an event, I'd sit down, I'd be the dude polishing my armor, uh, cleaning it up and stuff like that. This is like a nightmare for me. I spend so much time trying to keep this armor nice and shiny. Look, that's definitely like an arm smudge right there. And I use so much oil in this, I don't understand how I woke up a couple days later, I peaked and, well, there you go, rusty again. So, I probably wear armor on average um, one and a half times a week. I always get a workout in armor at least once a week because it keeps me loose, keeps me used to armor and its functionality and uh, just practice because when you're moving your arms in your armor, it's a lot different than if you're just practicing on a pellet home. So the rules do say, uh, if you look, that you can actually have some rust on here after you compete. So rust free up until um, things are going to happen while you're at an event. As you can see here, this chain mail is like the biggest thing that I think is ever going to rust for anybody, especially with these open face helmets because you're breathing in and out of here. So you can see it gets on my padding, but you can always clean that up. It is a pain in the butt to clean though, unless you like to pretend you're brushing your teeth for like three or four hours. So uh, a real good scrub down can make this nice and shiny. You can always fix rust. But um, I'm going to say one thing. I understand, and it's very important, and I agree that you need to be rust-free. Especially if you're going to be in something huge like Battle of the Nations. I mean, do you want to be a knight in shining armor and look good in all the videos and photos? Or do you want to see some dude out there running around like in a rust bucket? You know, it's, it makes sense. Rust is, is not attractive, and it just shows that you don't keep care of your stuff. And who wouldn't want to keep care of your armor? So let me show you what, what I typically do, because like I said, I wear this a lot, and I sweat in it a lot, and I frequently have these little issues where I wake up, and although I thought I did a great job, I have a little bit of rust. This right here is all you need to get by, so you still look decent. Now you're not gonna be totally shiny, but you get rid of all this brown, and it might just look a little black when you're done. But you're just going over it with very fine sandpaper, like this right here, the 2500, and all you need to do is just get that top layer off. 2500 doesn't take off a lot, like you can see right here. And you're gonna put some oil on top of this too. So basically you're gonna check and once you feel that it's smooth, it feels pretty smooth. Um, and I'll show you my legs here in a little bit. They're covered in, in black spots right now. <laughs> but uh, it'll just make this look a little black. So there you go. You know, it takes the rust off. Very fine sandpaper right there. And now uh, you're gonna take some oil, of course. I mean, this is what I use. I'm not recommending a certain brand. There's probably better things out there. Maybe not, that's what I use. See, it just turns it uh, a little, this is actually wet to dry paper, so you can do this. But you can see I missed a little bit. There you go. This right here will just make it look like some, some black kind of blemishes. At least it's not that ugly brown rust color, right? So you're gonna do your armor up just like that. This is what I recommend for your most frequent rust treatment because you're using very fine sandpaper. You're just getting that brown off. And you're gonna have a little bit of a, a black mark where it was, but you're not digging down in there with anything more abrasive. Hit subscribe right now, by the way, if you haven't, if you like the stuff you're watching this channel. So you're gonna have those little black marks, but that's because the rust is set in, it's too late for you, and uh, you're gonna have to actually dig down in there deep to get that off and be nice and polished, ready for a competition like Battle of the Nations. This is about five months of use since any major like rust cleanup or polishing I've done on the legs. Um, as you can see, those are just come home, dry them off, oil them up, and of course, if you get that occasional wake up and see rust in the morning, you use that fine sandpaper like we did earlier and, and put some oil on top. So here's the thing. I did this experiment because like as you can see here, I did for this knee. See where it gets real shiny there? That is using a grain of 400, and I worked my way out, so 400, 600 up to that like 2500 I showed you. I took a penny and this is that experiment that I wanted to share with anybody out there watching this video that wears steel plate armor and is trying to get rust off of it. Every time that you scrape down into that steel you're taking metal off. We saw this penny start originally dirty. I know copper is not the same as steel by any means but every time I, I went over this penny as if I was trying to get that polished look like I showed you on my knee a little bit ago 
check it out. By the end, it's not even recognizable. We took that much off that layer of copper that now it's totally flat. So that is about eight treatments that you just saw. You want your armor to last a lifetime, or at least until you get hit with a halberd and it breaks. But keep that in mind. So that was eight treatments of that uh, polishing that I did on, on that penny and I lost that much surface area. So keep that in mind. If there's someone out there always rubbing into your penny. steel and plate. And this is that experiment uh, that I wanted time, to share with anybody out there watching this video that wears so steel plate armor and is trying to get rust off of it. Every time that you scrape down into that steel, you're taking metal off. We saw this penny start originally dirty. I know copper is not the same as steel by any means, but every time I, I went over this pennies, if I was trying to get that polished look like I showed you on my knee a little bit ago, check it out. By the end, it's not even recognizable. We took that much off that layer of copper that now it's totally flat. So that is about eight treatments that you just saw. You want your armor to last a lifetime, or at least until you get hit with a halberd and it breaks. But keep that in mind, so that was eight treatments of that uh, polishing that I did on, on that penny and I lost that much surface area. So keep that in mind, if there's someone out there always rubbing into your steel plate, uh, over time, a lifetime, you're gonna take a lot of metal off there. So before we go, check this out. It's been a whole five months since I had any kind of practice with another person, but I do have some stats to update. I checked back through all the battle banters and found that I've spent a total of six thousand four hundred sixty one dollars I had uh, two thousand nine hundred seventy five dollars that did not include because I had bought a two-handed axe uh, from Beekman Armory uh, I got a Buhert technology axe um, I also did not include my Mongolian optimized armor set and uh, my ice falcon sword that I bought so I do have the price totals are now all current, $6,461 I've spent on this sport. And um, nothing upcoming except uh, November. It looks like in November there's actually gonna be a fight in Myrtle Beach. Oh uh, man, I should have been actually two day in Virginia fighting, but uh, that didn't work out because of COVID. So, you know, it is what it is. November maybe, hopefully I can maybe even find an event just to travel to to get some video footage for you guys, some fight footage, even some SCA stuff, hopefully Corn Maze comes up in, in 2020 October, so stuff to look forward to. This was all in the rule books under uh, armor and weapon surface surfacing rules. Um, actually, why don't we check it out, last thing before we go. Just for fun, let's take a look at the rule books here. Uh, I just come across the rust thing and thought I'd make a whole video about it. Just because it's something that I never really thought about. Alright, so arms and armor surfaces, finish and decoration rules. Basically, uh, it's pretty common sense, you know. Um, things that they're really looking out for is this. Painting, definitely no spray paint. I wouldn't be spray painting my stuff either, you know, guys. be Make it legit and look nice. So, painting, as you can see, it has to be... Uh, Permitted only for replicas of, of existed painted helmets with the application period technique, which is not spray painting. But some of this actually look pretty cool. Um, etching, of course, it has to be, you can't just have etching because you want etching. It has to be uh, documentable. Uh, here's some great examples of some really nice, well-maintained armor. They could have had rust buckets too, up to like a day or two before uh, Battle of the Nations or something. But there you go. Three nice looking suits there. Um, there's all kinds of other finishing that they're showing that's allowed, the, the, the mirror polishing, um, and, you know, bluing even, uh, and of course the rejected stuff. Look at this, like, that's not even real armor, of course, the first, at least that second one, the first one looks like it's just display armor too, but look at the third guide. You made it, you made the, uh, authenticity committee's rule book. Like, who would show up with a helmet like that? Some dudes do, some girls might too, I don't know. But um, don't show up like that. Keep your stuff nice and clean. <laughs> you got welds that they're talking about. This unfinished look, you know, that stuff, that that pitting is just the material, the workmanship, it's just not complete. Um, might be fun just to play around with, but this too, like who leaves grinder marks on stuff? It always amazed me, you know, blacksmiths, when I first saw how they work and they use like modern tools, it's like, huh, I was like, I didn't even... I thought they were all just using um, ball peen hammers the whole time. But I don't know. There you go. Just some other stuff, especially this painting. You know, a lot of guys paint stuff on there. I'm sure you're aware of it. If you're watching this video and you're new, I hope I helped you out. If you're already a pro at this stuff and know, you're, know what I'm talking about, you know, congrats. You know more than me. 
And as always, thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll catch you in the next video. Don't know when, but uh, I'm trying to keep at least once a week or every two weeks at the most. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Have a good one.